Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, greetings, everyone. Good to see you all here. Greetings to the, apostle of, the apostles of the house and the pastor of the house and the prophet of the house and the prophets of the house. Uh, good to see you all here. Amen. Are you awake? I was hoping you wasn't because it means I wouldn't have to preach. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Okay. I'm going to open up, I'm going to open this um, session with you just by simply saying this to you, by simply asking you this question. Often when God wants to provoke you, he'll ask you something that is obvious. And sometimes in him asking you what is obvious, you really and truly you're missing what God really wants to say. And when you come to the point in your life where when you read the scriptures, you already know it, then God doesn't need to tell you anymore. And so we understand that the word is eternal and it's everlasting. The word is set, but it continues to be. That's why the revelation of God's word is that it is seed. Amen. And the first thing a seed has to do, it has to die, and it has to take root. And when it does, it starts to grow. But no seed grows on the surface. It grows in the earth. So the mechanism to what you're going to see and eat from, what you see is a manifestation, but the real revelation is what's in the earth. And so there are certain things about us and about what God's put in us that really and truly we don't know. You say, why? Because we've not grown to that part yet. So it has not yet materialized. So I'm going to simply ask you this question, and I want you to be very transparent. Be very transparent. One of the things I do know is that we think that faith is denial. No, faith is transparency. Faith is transparency. Let me just give an example, a simple example of what I mean. If I don't know a thing, I'm not going to pretend, but I do. I'm just going to simply tell you, I don't know. Is that correct? It's not a sin to not know. All right? So I'm going to simply ask you this question, and I want you to be truthful. Some of you here I've known for years. I recognize that stranger at the back. I think his name's Todd. There you go. I'm just playing. One of my favorites I've always loved. Just like to mess with you, as you know. Uh, I just want to ask you this question because it's going to make you think. Um, and I want you to be open now, full disclosure. How many of you here will admit that there are seasons and there are moments when be truthful, don't lie and be super spiritual, where honestly you felt either you didn't have enough faith or your faith failed. I don't know anybody that has not had that. Can we be real? Let's be honest. Now, now you've now you got to understand this now because memories are powerful because failure is a teacher. And there are things that you remember, yeah, Mosa, hi. And there are things that you remember that because you remember it, it's now part of your psyche. It's actually now preventing you from going forward because you're now conditioned by that failure. So you know what not to do because you've learned not to do because it didn't work before. So there are areas in our life where our faith is not developed. And we're in a time right now where no matter who you are, I don't care how great you are, there are things that we're going to face that's going to be the mirror to what your faith is and what your faith is not. Now, let me give you a simple example right now. There's some of you here right now that your faith 
is like your pancreas. You say, why? Some of your faith right now, it's on insulin. In other words, it's not producing what it's designed to produce. I better pick this. Yeah, this could go a whole different place, so I better keep it where I want to keep it. And we've got people in the church right now who are experiencing death in their faith. When a person is, well, some of you here might have experienced it. When a person is a diabetic, as you know, there are different stages of a diabetic. And the worst stage is when you just can't produce. You literally have to have something outside of you injected into you. And that's what we're seeing right now with the body of Christ. Is that we're seeing alternatives injected into our faith that's not producing the supernatural at the level and the rate that it should. So we're preaching and we're ministering to a people right now whose faith is literally dead. And we really do not realize why it's dead. And when you don't realize when your faith is dead, you keep repeating what's, sorry, you keep repeating what kills your faith. And this is the day where your faith is to be alive. Now, why is there a strong emphasis on faith right now? People, I want you to listen to me good and don't let anybody fool you. There is a direct relationship to faith and the presence of God. If the truth be told, faith cannot be separated from the presence of God. Because faith is the way we live in the presence of God and access the presence of God. And faith causes the presence of God and the glory of God to materialize. And so we're in a day right now where I tell you right now what God wants to do is to get you off of the insulin that you've been taking for your faith. And he's going to change something. So let me just simply ask you some things just so you can see where we're heading right now. How many of you here know that all we need right now in these end times, in these end times, how many of you here know that all we need is faith? Say amen. amen. That is not true. I've just located your first death. You say, why? Because faith has to have a counterpart. You say, well, what do you mean by a counterpart? Well, the Bible says, add to your faith. <laughs> you hear me? The word says what? Add to your faith. What you add to your faith is the counterpart to your faith. Naked faith by itself will not produce. And what we're failing to understand is what we have to add to it. Faith has many, many, many counterparts. Oh my goodness gracious me. There's a counterpart right now that everybody is missing. No matter who we are, no matter how great your walk is, there's an... Let me give you some example. Do you know that patience is a counterpart to faith? So you know that simply means even though everything that God has provided is now, but not everything that God's provided has materialized yet. <laughs> So faith in character versus faith in the now are two separate things. Isn't it weird that when you look in Hebrews 11, all the well-known heroes of faith are listed? But don't you find it weird? A per the person who you think would be there is not there. Let me give you an example of who I would have thought should be in the hall of faith, but for whatever the reason, he's not there. 
Have you ever not found it strange that everybody knows the story of Job? But it's weird. The writers didn't take the time to say Job. They said Moses. They said Abraham. They said Sarai. And, I, and, I, and there are times when people talk about, I'm waiting for something for God to do stuff, and we jokingly say, you got to have the patience of Job. And you know what's interesting? In the yeah, see, I don't want. I gotta, I gotta be faithful to what I said. Only because I love you, I'm gonna stick to this. Listen, to this. This, is, this, this is this is powerful, because in the end times, faith is connected to patience. In the end times, patience is connected to the promises. You've got to look at your counterpart. You've got to look at the counterparts of faith. See, we preach faith, but what are the counterparts? Talk to me, somebody. What are the counterparts? Add to your faith. So without the adding, there's no manifestation. So 2020, so 2023, we're going to have to consciously make the decision of learning to add to our faith, understanding it's a counterpart. Now, there are people that's the counterpart to your faith. That's why there's such a thing as a company of faith. In the Priyabusha, in the prophetic, there's a counterpart to the prophetic. That's why in the Old Testament, there were companies of the prophets. They were counterparts. That's why in the New Testament, there were companies of apostles. They were all counterparts. What one never had, the other had. The other completed the other. This, what if I said to you, if you listen this good, this can be your year of completion. Amen. All the things that have not happened yet, everything that was in the process that all of a sudden grinds to a halt. What if I said to you, this is the year where there'll be no halt? Amen. Now, one of the ways of how you know when you find a counterpart to your faith is your faith accelerates. <laughs> See, let, 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 me, let, me see you, let me show you simple counterparts. That one person is powerful. Thank God one is powerful. But if two on earth agree, yeah. counterpart. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm going to find the counterpart to my faith. Say it again. I'm going to find the counterpart to my faith. I'm coming off the table. There will no longer be any insulin added to my faith. I'm not a diabetic. I'm connected to heaven. Therefore, my faith is alive. My faith is alert. And my faith is liquid. Say it after me. That means it's free. That means it's free. It's working. It's working. And, it's and it's flowing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. All right. Amen. amen. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. All right. So we get into some counterparts now. I want you to go with, go with me quickly to, to Psalms 37. Psalms, Psalms 37. And there are some things you're going to hear me say, and in your mind, I want you to think of the word counterpart. Mm. Amen. Amen. Say amen if you're ready. Amen. Now, now, I want you to be aware. I want you to hear me clear right now. Hear it good. Hear it good. Everybody, I don't care who you are, there are areas in your life that you know God has to move in. 
but something is missing, which simply implies the present faith that you have is not enough. If it was, it would have happened by now. Do that make sense to you? Like, I know for, let me give you something. There are certain things in my home, in our home, that even though I have the authority to make the decision, there's some things I know. Let me go now. If I do not get Marina's input, does that make sense to you? And we have been functioning so long without a counterpart. See, we you see, you're looking, you're looking for more faith when all the Lord said to you is all you need is the mustard seed. <laughs> so more faith was never the issue. It's the counterparts that will make that little mustard seed be what it's supposed to be. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you right now, it's about time that some mountains start to move. Some red seas start to open. Some things start to flourish. We're at that time right now where if this thing really is real, the whole church better come into it. Because if there was an alternative, now here's now, if there was an alternative to live in, then the scripture would state it. But it clearly doesn't say it. It clearly says, the just shall live. And, and, and you know something? If you have a progressive revelation of this truth, then you can progressively live in the supernatural. You can't live in, oh, better let me say it to you another way. You can't live in the now having yesterday's supernatural activity when even wickedness right now has increased. You've got to be current in the current flow of God to have supernatural activity. Amen. Amen. So I want you to keep it in your mind, your counterparts. Like, for example, let me just say, I'm not even getting to what I want to get to here. So let me give you an example now. How many of you here notice that? Sickness and death is the counterpart to sin. <laughs> in, that there, in that death didn't exist without sin. Hear me. Poverty and lack has to have a counterpart. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Get rid of, you, that, and there are some counterparts you better get rid of. If you want the flow of God and you want the blessing of God, some counterparts you better get rid of. Adam didn't know poverty. He didn't even know death. Death was a new thing. But it was a counterpart to the curse. very, very interesting. Say the word again, counterpart. counterpart. Say it again. I want you to say it aloud. Hear me good. You will never thrive until you find this counterpart. I want you to keep that in your mind. Oh my God, have mercy. And sometimes what your foot, okay, I can't get to it. And some of the times what you're familiar with doesn't mean because you're familiar with it that you're joined to it. Joseph's brothers proved that point. <laughs> His prosperity didn't come because of them or from them. They were not, isn't it funny? They were not his counterpart. But isn't it funny? Pharaoh was. <laughs> Well, I bet, Leonard, like I said to you, we can go a whole different vein. I want you to conscientiously look at the person next to you and say, I got to find my counterpart. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I want you to say it. No, say it. Put it out in the atmosphere. Say it again. <laughs> say it with me. Because my money. Say it with me. Because my money. Because my money. 
disconnected, disconnected. to my counterpart. <laughs> see, let me see. See, you're going to hear me good. See, that's why people don't understand. See, that's why sometimes, see, sometimes the wicked are your counterpart. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> don't cuss them, bless them. I said, don't curse them, bless them. I said, don't curse them, bless them. Amen. I've seen wicked people, people who don't even like us, give to us. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me, the counterpart. How you gonna get the wealth of the wicked you don't even know the wicked? Anyway, I don't know why I got into that, but praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Let's hope the wicked, actually, yeah, the more wicked people you get, you get more of an opportunity to get the money. That's about right. Okay, all right. Okay, that'll work. All right, quickly jump with me, please, to uh, Psalms 37, 3 to 5. 3 to 5. Tr and I'm reading to you from the Amplified Bible. Trust, rely on, and have confidence in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed securely on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him also, and he will do it. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. Okay, Romans, so Romans 15, 13 from the Amplified. May the God, may the God of hope fill you. Now, listen to this now fill you with all joy and peace with my God. Hear it again. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Oh, so joy, <laughs> talk to me. So joy and peace is what? I'm looking at a lot of miserable Christians. Can't smile. You'll never believe they believe in God. In fact, whatever they believe, I don't want to believe it. I mean, it's not even funny. I mean, my God of mercy. Think about it. The counterparts. Without any of these things, your faith is not whole. May the God of... I'm reading from the Amplified. I'm sorry. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Prove the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you will abound... That you will what? Abound. In what? Hope. Oh. Oh. An overflow with confidence in his promises. Peace and joy is the preservation of faith. Amen. It's the stabilizer. In other words, your faith will not be running to and fro. It is stabilized. Because did you know that in the mind of God, wherever peace is, order must be present. So your faith is in order. So now it's in order, it can flow. It can work. You won't misfire it. It keeps your faith liquid and in a state of ever producing. Now listen to this now, because I said it to you a minute ago. When your body no longer produces its own insulin, you need something from outside the body to help produce it. Now trust what I tell you right now. We've got a lot of diabetic Christians. The faith 
in the house of God right now is no longer pure. It's a defiled faith we're preaching to. That's why so many of our teachings in the church now has to be corrective because we're teaching now to a faith that is now defiled. Hear us now. Today, what we are seeing is something outside of faith replacing faith. So it, it actively reduces faith to something natural. You're now cut off from the flow of the supernatural. Hear this now. Faith is the condition of the heart towards God and His Word through relationships. Listen to this. A crooked heart, a crooked heart can't see straight. Because you're in a place of iniquity, so you're walking in deception. And when you're walking in deception, listen to this. Proverbs 21, 2. <laughs> Every man's way. Wow, nobody's hearing me now. You got mighty quiet. Every man's way is right okay and see when it's in your own eyes can't tell you nothing at that point I can't talk to you you know why because at that point you don't listen so you're walking in deception which you're calling faith because the way you see it is the way you believe it That was an exciting amen. <laughs> Happy is the man that feareth away always. Proverbs 28, 14. Happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Whatever, hear this now, whatever is in the heart is what comes out under pressure. <laughs> and the end time is marked by one word, pressure. We're going to see what you believe. You say, how? Because circumstances are either going to press you into faith or out of faith. And when you're in faith, you don't talk your condition, you talk the opposite. If you talk the condition, what if I said to you, if you talk the condition, that is deception. Faith never talks condition, it talks the answer. But it's how, but it's how it appears in your own eyes is what's now your faith. You cannot walk in your own reality and then say you're mirroring the Word. Listen to this. 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 Praise the Lord. Is there anybody there? Say amen. Amen. All right. Here we go. Proverbs. Not Proverbs. Psalms 19, 14. Let the words of thy mouth and the meditation of my heart. Wow. So, so here is that. So, in other words, <laughs> simply put, our words. God can't cash your words. If they're not acceptable.
you're going to change the currency. Huh. Luke 6, 45. A good, a good man out of the treasure of these heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the, sorry, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. I'm just reading you these things. Now listen to this now. James 4, 8. James 4, 8. It's been there ever since I got saved. It's still there. Are you there yet? Okay, hear it now. Come close to God with a contrite heart, and he will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your unfaithful hearts, you... D oh. Oh. Okay. Let me see if I'm reading this right. Let's read it again. No, no, let's read it again. This is from the Amplified. Come close to God with a contrite heart, and he will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your unfaithful hearts, you double-minded people. So in other words... <laughs> you being double-minded in the mind of God says you have more than one mindset. So that right there tells me and tells God that in the church right now, we have a lots of schizophrenics in the church. We have schizophrenic believers. They don't know what they believe. Amen. Because they've chosen to walk in what's in their own heart. And faith is the condition of the heart. Say amen if you're hearing. Amen. Okay, now listen to this. I have to be very good. Look at a person next to you and say, What's in your mouth? <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson has been saying for the last few years, what's in your wallet? <laughs> but God's not asking what's in your wallet. He's asking what's in your mouth. And what's in your mouth comes from what's in your heart. Now listen to this now. <laughs> Proverbs 18. 20 and 21. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his lips. He will be satisfied with the consequence of his words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, hear this now. Simply put scripture that we read all our lives. So, right now, we can be walking in death or we can be walking in life. So if you keep speak, if we're speaking the way we're speaking, you are slowly dying. You are the architecture of your own death. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequence of their words. Proverbs 8, sorry, let me read to you again. I'm going to read to you now from the King James. Because we know God taught King James. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall, be, shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm going to change the fruit. Because I'm going to change what I say. Now, one of the things I think that's important right now is this, is to not catch 
the spirit of the age. This is what I mean when I say that. How do you know when you quote the spirit of the age? Because you begin to talk just like them. If you're, now if you're, now you know what's bad? When they say there's going to be recession, that's one thing. But you know what people don't understand? When you start saying it. When you become a participant in somebody else's word, you're going to have their reality. So if everybody right now is speaking recession, then look for it. You know why? Because you're speaking it. I'm not looking for a recession. You say, why? Because there's no recession in Canaan. Haven't you heard? There's no recession in the promised land. Hallelujah. We have in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4.13, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Say it with me. I have, I have the same spirit of faith, spirit of faith. According, as it is written, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Hear this right now. Put this in your spirit, man, right now. You have to learn to see your mouth as an ATM machine. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You gotta learn to see your mouth as an ATM machine. In fact, I want you to do something right now. Just, just do as I tell you. Don't, don't think about it. Just do it. Take, take out your credit card. Just do what I tell you right. Just take out your credit card. I, I want you to just take, just take out your credit card. Forget the, 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 the checkbook now. Just take out your credit card and just put it up in the air. I just want to show you something. Just, just conscientiously, just put it in the air like that. <laughs> this to me is so funny. I'm looking at you like looking like you got arthritis to to go in your pocket to pull out the card, Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, lift it up before God right now. Okay, now listen to this right now. What you can pull out of the machines in the earth. Talk to me, somebody. Now keep it there right now. It's limited. Is that correct? In fact, you can only put, you can only take out what's there if it's there. Okay, now keep your card there right now. You cannot put your card into the machine without having an access number. Your tithe and your offering. I better be. It guarantees whether war, whether recession, come rain, come shine, there's a guarantee that there's something in the place. And you can draw it day, noon, or night. You could take it down now. So the question is right now, where do you want to put it? Where do you want to put it? Do you want to put it in a place where there's a limited daily supply you can take out? Or do you want to put it in a place where there's no level? There is no cap. In the mind of God, it can be a house. Watch this now. But in the earth, I don't have that. Your testimony just proved it. The one you told just proved it. What you didn't have here, <laughs> and it caused something to shift in the earth. Don't put your hands in the hands of other people who don't have your faith level. Use your mouth. 
understanding, your mouth is an ATM machine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now say amen if you believe it. Faith is the eternal language of God. He doesn't have another language, and there's not an in-between. God works from the level of your expectation. Expectation requires action. There is no such thing as passive expectation. Expectation requires action. Action is the proof of pursuit. You've got to do something. So that simply means till you do something, nothing can materialize. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. Okay, hear this now. Hear this now. Say it with me. You've got to do something. Say it again. You've got to do something. To time, sorry, to time, to time, faith is always the future. But to faith, time is the compression of now. That was the, isn't it funny? What man is saying now, prophetically, faith was always the original multiverse. Science is now catching up with something God has always done. Amen. Amen. See, you, like what you may say yesterday, see, you're not even caught up with you yet. The original you is calling the lower you. Hear this now. Your word cuts the path of your life. Amen. Amen. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. Hear this now. Your mouth is a dis <laughs> your mouth is a dispenser. <laughs> Every time you speak, something is transferred. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith suspends the laws of nature proving there's a higher law that it's not subjected to. Faith will not be bullied by reason. One of the interesting things is when you're trying to believe for something that you know you're to believe God for, but you've got people bullying you into reason. How can you do that? Why should you do that? And they give you every reason that does make sense, but, it, but it's deteriorating your faith. So you're going to have to choose right now to either accept reason or you're going to have to simply choose to cut your path. Hear it again. Faith will not be bullied by reason. Amen. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. Mm. amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to lift your hands before me today. And I want you to make this declaration. Hallelujah. Say it after me. Upon the authority, Upon the authority. of the written word of God, and the evidence of the finished work as an heir of God, I contest. Oh, I feel it. <laughs> Something's getting ready to happen. No, some, something's getting ready to happen right now. In fact, say this with me again. Upon the authority of the written word of God, and the evidence of the finished work as an heir of God I contest every debt 
every sickness, every, sickness, every, disease, every disease, every work of the enemy in my life right now. By declaring the blood, the blood has, prevailed, has prevailed, releasing me, releasing me from, Satan's from Satan's reign, I declare, I declare his, reign his reign in my finances, in, my finances, in, my marriage, in my marriage, in everything connected to me, has come to an abrupt end. In Jesus, name. in Jesus name and I declare, and I, declare I, am not I am not under the jurisdiction of darkness, under the jurisdiction of darkness. but I am, I am a legal beneficiary of the finished work, the finished work. In, Jesus in Jesus name in Jesus name now stand on your feet and begin to praise him Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, go ahead, give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, praise him. Go ahead. You're a beneficiary. You're a beneficiary. You're a beneficiary. In Jesus' name, say it after me. This year, this year, this year, I will add to my faith. I will look for the counterparts. And I will be drawn to my counterparts. And I will accelerate in Jesus' name. This will be my breakout year in Jesus' name. Now give him praise if you believe that. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us today for our message. I trust that the word was inspired, encouraging, and enriched you in your journey and walk of faith. Listen, you may have never made a confession of faith in Christ Jesus. I want to simply give you the opportunity to invite Christ into your heart. Simply make this confession of faith out of your mouth and believe it in your heart. But say, Dear Heavenly Father, I repent of sin, both knowingly and unknowingly. I believe that Jesus died and was raised from the grave, that I might be justified. I receive you today as my Lord and as my Savior. I thank you for filling me with your precious Holy Spirit, that I may better know you and that I may better serve you. Friend, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, Christ is now alive on the inside of you. You have received the gift of eternal life. I want to encourage you to connect to a Bible teaching church. If you live here in the northeastern Ohio area, I invite you to come and worship God with us. Listen, also, if this message has blessed you, has ministered life to you, then I want to encourage you to sow into the ministry. The Bible says when we receive of the food or the word of God spiritually, that we're to sow naturally. And truly as offerings and gifts of love that enable us to continue to do what we do to bring the gospel to you right where you are. So we appreciate every gift of love that you sow into this ministry. Truly, you are making it happen. Well, until next time, I would encourage you to journey throughout your week and continue to look, love, and live like Jesus. I'll see you here next week. God bless.